The savage murder of 82-year-old Katie Page shocked when, people, when it happened more than 40 years ago. And tonight, it will shock people again. Everyone who knew Katie loved her. She was a model citizen. No one had a bad word to say against her. So why was she killed and who killed her? Tonight, I can reveal new evidence that could answer both questions, but only with your help. She was a wonderful person, full of life, and joked with everybody, and she took as much as she gave. She was very determined. She was resilient. Nothing seemed to scare her. She'd stand up. She just had this presence about her. Katie Page lived in Canamble, in the west of New South Wales. It's a quiet town where the only thing louder than the galahs are the church bells. Rewind to 1971. Katie is one of Canamble's most loved residents and answers the call of those church bells more than most. She was Catholic and she was um, very, very strong in the church. Longtime local Bill Shanahan remembers the last time he saw his friend. It was just one day before Katie was killed. And of course, no one had to guess where she was going. She was going to Mass, of course. And anyway, I went down and turned around and picked her up and took her to, uh, to the church and let her out. And I said to her, don't forget, this will cost you a prayer. And showing her wit, she said, don't worry, darling, I pray for all, all the sinners. But on the 4th of February, 1971, a sinner took Katie's life. On that day, Katie gets ready to go to the shops. She's picking up a prescription and buying the papers for an elderly friend. She heads outside. Another lady was walking past at 1.30 and had seen Kate talking to an unknown person at the front door. That is probably the last person who's seen Kate alive. To this day, no one knows who that person is. It's never come forward. Cold case detective Jason Darcy believes that while Katie is out, an intruder enters her house. Kate has started off into town and turned back and basically confronted this person. It's a very callous crime, you know. Kate was a 82-year-old lady, you know, she's basically helpless. The following morning, Another lady's called in to see Kate, knocked on the door. Kate! There was no answer. She's seen that the mail was still in the mailbox. Grace. Another lady was walking Grace. past. I think something's wrong with Kate. They've gone around, okay. they've looked through the window. Oh, careful! Another of Katie's friends was walking by at the time, Ray Adams, then 24. Grace and Mary saw me on the road. Oh, And they asked me if I'd go and climb in the window because they thought Kate had had a heart attack. Can you see? Can see her. I climbed inside. I saw Kate lying face down. A lot of blood. On that day in February 1971, when the body of 82-year-old Katie Page was found. It was a crime that shocked and mystified the local community. And that's because the normally placid Castle Ray River had burst its banks. The town is cut off and all the roads are flooded. So nobody is leaving town, not even the murderer. They basically put a net over the township of Canamble. Canamble's 3,000 residents, including the killer, are trapped in town. But police don't catch the culprit. What they do find outside Katie's house, hidden under a drum, is her handbag. There's no conclusive fingerprint evidence, and back then, no DNA samples were taken. I believe this person was uh, 
was looking for money. He was a, a thief. Robbery gone wrong. Robbery gone wrong, yeah. On an 82-year-old old lady. I think he's panicked. He's uh, in fear of being identified, and that's why he's struck, struck Kate. But the killer leaves behind a significant clue. Imprints from the butt of the murder weapon, a Spanish-made shotgun. The person would have had it concealed, because it would have obviously stuck out someone walking down the street, unless it was wrapped up in a, a duffel bag or in a coat or something. To this day, the gun has never been found. But we can show you exactly what it looks like. Mark Horder explains how ballistics experts at the time identified the type of gun that was used. As we can see on this photo, you've got a build-up of blood from the screw, so it'd be the location of the screw, the shape of the, the actual pad, and also it looks like there was some sort of emblem. That emblem will often have the manufacturer of the firearm actually um, embossed into the pad itself. So the striations on the dress are actually from this shoulder pad here? That's correct. It's quite consistent with, with this type of pad. And they basically made inquiries around Australia to identify owners of these Spanish Garana shotguns. Unfortunately, back in those days, the gun laws weren't as stringent as they are now, and, and people weren't required to register each firearm. Police in Canambal continue to investigate, but the case goes cold. And the town struggles to cope. They were started locking their doors and yeah, looking at people differently, even strangers, you know. Everyone got scared. It's just sent a shiver through the whole town and that sort of lasted for, for years. It's just like a big ripple effect through the whole town. It's 42 years since Ray Adams found Katie's body, but that terrible day has left a scar. Yeah, it still brings back that memory because I can still see Kate laying on the floor in the pool of blood with a gash in the back of her head. She always featured in my life. This blanket is 60 years old. And it was given to me by Kate. And I have treasured it all my life. And that's why I wanted it here today. I just hope they catch the mongrel.